This section is going to explain how we manage projects inside of BIMTRACK. And for the purpose of this, I've logged into a slightly different hub to the one that we were using previously because I want to have some paid for facilities in here. Once you're logged into your full hub, we have the ability to come in and add a project. We can give that project a name, such as temporary project. And we can choose to give that project an avatar if we want to, again using any supported image format. We can also define to work with a template if we want to for that given project. We will come back to that shortly. Let's go ahead and create this. Now the moment that we create a project, we will instantly see more information in front of us. Firstly, you'll notice the menu down the left hand side has extended far beyond what we had before. That is because we now have an active project selected, being the temporary project that I've just created. BIMTRACK has also put us straight into the project settings. It understands that we have just created a project, so therefore we probably want to administrate and manage that project by changing some of the settings before we continue. Let's focus on doing that now. From our project settings, we have the ability, if we need to, to rename our project. If we made a typo or a mistake, or should we just want to change that to something else, we can do so through that text box at the top. We also have the ability to add or edit the avatar, again using any valid image-based format, should we need to. We have some shortcut keys on the right-hand side, such as the ability to open this project and look at its issues. We won't do that now because we don't have any issues. This is a brand new project. We also have a shortcut to be able to manage the users. Again, we will come to that shortly. We don't need to do that from this particular location just now. If we take a look at the settings, they're really simply laid out. We'll start with the general settings at the top of the screen. We can either click on one of the hyperlinks here to change a setting or we can use the pen at the end of each line. Now these are the defaults for issues that are created on BIMTRACK. So I'm saying, for example, if I find a clash inside of Navisworks and turn that into a BIMTRACK issue, it will default for seven days before it's due. I want to change that in this case to make it shorter. So I'm going to change it to five days and press the tick. We want the issues to be coloured by their priority by default which I'm more than happy with but again if you wanted to change it you can click it and use the drop down to choose any of the other available attributes in the list. We will leave that on priority for this example. Finally we have the ability to choose what attributes you would like to be required, what are mandatory, what do you want to make sure that the users have to fill in when they are creating issues. Again, we can choose to edit this and just choose from a simple drop down list to say that I want to make sure that the priority attribute is always filled out. And I want to make sure the type attribute is always filled out. We can choose as many or as little as we want to before accepting that with the tick. That brings us nicely onto the attributes section. Now the attributes are really straightforward. We basically have different attribute groups, if you like, on the top such as zones, phases, status, types, disciplines, and priorities. These are all off the shelf defaults. And then within those attribute uh, groups, we have different attribute values. For example, we have a drop down list for types. And under that drop down list, we have a blank value, a comment, an issue, a request, and a solution. Each one of these can be edited apart from the default value. For example, if I don't want to ever log a solution, I can delete that from the list. We can also add custom. So I could add and choose that I want to add a clash. So that if I do find a clash inside of Celebri or Navisworks, whatever it might be, I can say that that is a clash as a type of issue. And I want to give that a color. Let's go for a nice deep blue color. We can also edit values. So rather than request down here, let's show you that we can edit this and we could change this to RFI. 
So it's very flexible to both edit, remove, and add information into these lists. We can also add our own attribute groups. If we come up and press the plus, we can add an attribute with a name. Let's just call this custom group. From there, we could choose whether we want to have something that's predefined, or we can have something that is a custom value. Let's choose a custom value. Let's press add. This basically gives the user, when they're adding issues, the ability to insert a text field. If we add another one, and this time we can choose predefined value, this will then give me a list value one, value two, value three, so on and so forth. These will now all be available when we're adding issues inside of BIMTRACK and as you would expect, can now be selected should you want them to be through our mandatory drop down. Finally, once we've gone through the general settings and we've gone through the attributes on the system, we have the ability to come down and start looking at categories. The categories are linking directly to the IFC models that we can view inside of BIMTRACK. For example, we have the ability to upload and view IFC files. Those IFC files will have different elements, and each one of those elements is assigned a category in the IFC. We can say through our project settings that, okay, well, under general, I will have beams, and I want every beam in my model to display a very specific color, or to be hidden, or to be transparent. Essentially, this is allowing us to control how our model will look and feel by default. As long as your IFC is controlled and exported correctly from your model authoring tool, we can come in here and choose how we want each element to display inside of the system. That's really powerful and really gives us some high-end customization should we need to. Once we're done with that, we just go ahead and click Save. If we've made a mistake and want to revert, we can choose to erase everything and go back to default. Again, really straightforward settings that allow you to control exactly how this hub and project are going to work. We then just have an overview at the top right. That overview will tell us how many issues we've got and how many users we've got on our project. We have a delete button. We cannot undo this. If we delete, the project will be deleted permanently. So I do recommend that we don't delete unless we really need to. Once we've changed those settings, if we should want to, we can go ahead and press the cog icon at the top right and choose to create a template. If these are settings that you want to roll out on every project that you create, we can go ahead and create a project template for this, which if I go back to my projects and choose to create a new project, will be available from the drop down list here to start a project with those settings by default. So let's get back into the project settings. Once again, once you're inside the project settings, we can either use the shortcuts at the top to manage the users, or we could simply go to the teams and users area on the lower left hand side. Now once we're inside a project, we have the ability to add and remove users from teams on the project. The first thing we need to do, however, is make sure that those users are added on the hub. If you don't have users on your hub, you won't be able to have users in your project. For example, if I go to hub settings at the top of the screen, in this hub, I have four users. I have myself, Nathan, Michael, and Johnny. From my projects, if I go into my temporary project, come down to teams and users, 
If I go to add user, you'll notice that I only have a drop-down list. I can't choose anyone that doesn't already exist on the project. So if I wanted to go ahead and add my colleague Richard into this list, I would first need to add him on my hub settings. I would come to hub settings, I would say add user, and I would type in Richard's details. I would choose whether he is a guest or an administrator before giving him access to one or more projects. Once he's added, he will then be available for selection through the project screen. So once again, I choose my temporary project, come down to teams and users, and you will see that by default, Richard has now been added on the project as an editor. The reason why is because I assigned him specifically to this project under the hub settings. If I go to add user, I can also come in here and add Nathan into this list as well. You notice that against each user, you have the ability to give them a team and a role. These can be edited on an individual basis. I'm going to come in and choose add team. And from that team, I'm maybe going to say architecture. I'm going to add another team, which might be mechanical. I'm going to take Nathan here and assign him to the mechanical team. From the role section, I'm going to create him an editor so he can create issues. He can work on issues, but he cannot administrate the project. If I made him a reader, he can only read. He cannot physically create anything. Richard, on the other hand, I'm going to assign to architecture and I will, will make him an editor. So we go through and assign users onto this project as we see fit. For myself, I can choose to give myself one or more groups. So users can be part of no group, single groups, or indeed multiple groups. It really depends on how you want to work. Once we've set our project settings, and we've configured our teams and users, we're ready to start working on this project. From this point, we would move on and start adding issues and controlling this as we need to.